Hello everybody and welcome to my Killabots Canadian National Championships event report. This is the second part, but if you missed the first episode, I'll catch you up to speed. After a quick loss and a close judge's decision, Blastwave is out of the competition. Stompbot lost its first match due to a loose wheel coming off, won its second match by knockout, and lost its third match by driving into the pit whilst trying to self right But I wasn't done yet. During the later parts of the competition, when they need to give those still in the bracket time to repair and recharge, they let those who are knocked out fight each other in exhibition matches. I ended up doing several of these matches. I wanted to get Blastwave working for these exhibition matches, but it was thoroughly dead, though not from combat. I was just unable to get a full set of drive motors working. Half of the set I ordered before the competition arrived like this, and the motors I had used against Taserface, which had kept working throughout the entire fight, just decided to break, presumably jammed up with leftover support I was unable to extract from the motor mounts. So Stompbot was all I had left, and since I had driven 10 hours for this competition, I wanted more fights, and more fights I got. My first exhibition match was against Chester, a furry clamp bot driven by Matt from Team Jester. This was going to be mostly a control match, and my strategy was to push them around and possibly into the pit. Let's see how that match went. We're both ready, so we will begin in three, two, one, fight. Look how fast Stompbot comes across. And do behind Chester, pushing into the corner, keeping those menacing jaws away from it. And he claps down. Almost gets a chance to fight on him there. But it's going to be difficult to stop off the so There you go. Got it grab. But the robot is so wide that the wheels don't even land on that dust pan. Or usually that would be the idea if you hold your opponent in. Oh, oh, oh. oh. To getting a push up on Chester there. To being underneath, running over the red hazards. Which we realize we've forgotten to do. There they are. And it turned off after they got stuck on it. Uh, back there. Kind of go around. There we go. Oh, there. Wait until he kind of comes out and then try and push him. Oh. Trying to grab a real narrowly miss, the Stompbot goes right back into Jaws. The thing with the lifters and grabbers like this is that you really gotta find it just right. In the meantime, of course, you're driving your robot, and it is moving, so you gotta reach over and hit the other stick, do whatever, but Let's try and push him really out. Hard to get that timing down, even for an experienced driver. Just see if he can move. Is it even moving? It might not be moving. If it's not, just try and like push it into something just for fun. Come on, go. He's driving into the pit. Back up into the pit. This was a really fun match. I had a couple opportunities to end it early, but I wanted to keep the match going because it was just a lot of fun. During the match, he did get a couple good grabs and almost pushed me out, but my wheelbase was wider than his dustpan and I was able to back out and keep going. He ended up losing a wheel sometime, and that ended with him high centered in the corner. With him high centered in the corner, I was able to push him out and into the pit. This was a really fun match, but we still have more. My next exhibition match was against Kelpie, the bigger brother to Highlander. But there were a bunch of fairy weights that wanted in on it, and it ended up turning into a rumble. Kelpie is a beetleweight pneumatic flipper which is easily able to send things into the ceiling. Here's how that rumble went. Three, pushing the button. Two, one, fight! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm gonna go in the pit if I do that. Save him! Save him! <laughs> 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 push, push me to the side so I uh... I'm trying, someone's pushing you the other way. Push me that way. Here. Some just went and fell in. Try it now, it might work. <laughs> you point, point me the other way. <laughs> Flip it. <laughs> Oh. There, go, go. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Try and get back up on this is intense. <laughs> Go. Oh, am I out already? Yeah, I think I'm out. He doesn't want to push it. He wants to completely get a flip on a minute 12. Still to go. He's out of air. I guess he wasn't counting on two of the flips here. As he's now trying to chase down anybody you can. There's a lot of blocks in here, guys. Last man standing. Minute 12. Minute 12 goes out. He's upside down. He can control it. Turn this. Can't even grab a plastic toy. That's not Matt Catter, very close to the blue push out area there. Still right. there to get a run out. Not quite even to go. Kelpie is actually one of the faster robots out here, despite the fact that these little guys couldn't be very fast. Pushing against Derpy Dozer. He's almost losing. Pushing against Derpy Dozer. Oh! 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 Oh!
He's pitched onto the wheel. Hold over there, stomp off, halfway up the wall. Albert practicing his gymnastics. Got to get that lifter in right place. He's actually got his wheels on the ground. Nearly catches Stompot there. Flipping backwards over, but now Stompot's under. Hard push into the red hazard there. Got the exposed back end going into it. Albert getting underneath him, flipping him over. Stompot the side. He's underneath that flipping arm, but he's a really uh, wobbly opponent to get a hold of. Because as long as he's moving that arm around, he's just flipping out all over the place. Making it difficult for Stompot to really get a good push on him. There he is against the wall. Albert going, I'm not sure I want to flip in this position. That's not really good. Nearly gets some stomp on the side, though. He's actually playing a high bot. So just a bit of a push on that bouncy tall box. Couldn't throw it over the wall. But it wraps very readily over Mega London. Oh, hooked on whatever that little post is at the back there. And Mega London getting underneath the wedge, lifting it up in the air for a bit. Stomp on bashing it into a hazard. Uh oh, driving into himself. And he tries to get around and hit Mega London again. I'm not sure if Albert is actually driving or just randomly hitting sticks. <laughs> but Stompot's trying to get him anyway. There he goes, under pushing against the wall into the red corner. Oh, the back, just to Stompot's to the back hill. Flips the arm over and pins him for a moment. Stompot under the exposed arm of a mega lunge. He flips backwards, I think, trying to dislodge himself, but not quite able to. Stompot running into him again against the wall, up onto the edge. Not a lot of gap back there though, he's going to have to get him over the walls towards the red and blue pushout areas rather than the, uh, the high arch wall. Oh! Crossing Mega Landing over the wall for the win. Good job, dude. This fight was absolutely amazing. It was another really fun driving matchup. No big spinners here, just two robots that can push and control. Stompbot was much more maneuverable than Mega London, but Mega London could get under Stompbot every time. There were a couple times he almost had me over the side, or beached along the edge, but in the end, I pushed him towards the edge, and while trying to get off my wedge, he ended up going over. This was another really fun exhibition match, but there's still more. And then we get to the final exhibition match. I heard someone asking if anyone wanted to fight steamed hams, and I wanted a rematch after that disappointment of the first match. We get into it, and I immediately get pushed out over the edge. After resetting and closing my push out, we begin again. It's like four four, right? It's not really a match, unless it's got at least five seconds. Alright, Pete, you're gonna get your stomp back back in the corner. Is drive working? Uh, it's, it's wonky. Mm. Everybody's in. We'll reset this here. Three. Just kind of two, run into him and he's at full one, speed. One. Fight. Uh, let's show him how it's done. But we know easy pushouts here. I'm gonna stop that man. He's absolutely random steam hands over the wall. Steam hands. Putting the wedge on the front of Stompbot there, taking it in stride. He bounces around again and again, flipping back onto his wheel. Stompbot banging it behind. Taking some foam off there as he runs the wall. Oh! Taking a hit. Goes flying through the air, doesn't bend that wedge. He's got the hole in the air. Another flip over, bouncing through on his wheels. Stompbot really got the best he's repeating hit. Another hard one there. Stompbot could be a good purchase of the wedge. Well, he might be able to rip him off the ground, but he does have some pretty decent magic power, but he's got to get a good hard run out of it. And now that red is going to be even harder as he uh, launches over steam hands. Wedge back to the weapon again, bouncing himself over on the blue hazard, coming in again towards the weapon, spinning off the red hazard, and that steam hands is following him around, turning the button off his wheels, out of control, ramping over again. Weapon spun down. Stop on trying to get around both of these. Vast robots, although Steve Hams has a bit more control of all the down force for a stop bot gliding along, spinning and drifting. Oh. Look at that hard oh. into the red side has a uh, push out area. Almost got him on the wall. Oh. Uh, the most really nearly had that win there. And quite an awesome one at that. Steve Hams turning the weapon back on the upside down. Still upside down after that kick him off the weapon. Stop bot. Stompbot gets the pin, good, over to the blue side. Great drive again. Not quite able to launch him over the side, though. Gonna be hard with that small block. But he's got the perfect angle on this one. He does hit the side. It does tend to launch it up in the air. A minute 13 still to go. Stompbot gets the weapon. Oh. He just really caught the weapon on that one. Oh, it up again. Now it's right side up. That's a bad position for Stompbot. Oh, is he stopped? Spinning the weapon down and it has stopped responding. What? He's got nothing. There it goes. Now it's moving. 
We did have this problem with Steve Young before where we shut down for your arm come back within just a few seconds. I think you can do that only 10 times in a single match. I think that belt's disabled. That would be the stop block. He's bouncing with the red hazard there trying to get around. Steve hands up on the way to win. This time pushing stop block back to the red hazard. And they get the pushing match. 32 seconds. Steve hands coming around for another one stop block bouncing off the red hazard. Behind the blue hazard there. Stop block coming back out around the center. Oh, the two Steve hands. Hard weapon first into the red hazard. Stop off mostly out of the cross team having his body, but it completely over the magnets. 13 seconds still to go. Good hard push there from the stomp block, but trying to pin Steve Hams in the corner there as he's now getting held against the wall. Steve Hams holding the stomp block Three, up against the wall. Two, two one. one. And time is up. It's the end of the match. Let's hear it for Brian Caden. This fight was one of the highlights of the entire event for me. Lots of damage, but stomp block kept on ticking. This was a great driving match. Esteemed Hams is incredibly fast and agile, and can actually match Stompbot's incredibly speedy driving. There was one moment where Stompbot runs into the drum on Steamed Hams, and it just goes flying. I managed to get under them a couple times, and almost managed to get them over the wall in the same vein as the fight against Mega London, but just couldn't quite manage it. The fight ended with me being pinned against the wall, and I was amazed I managed to keep driving after all the hits. Thanks to Brian from Buttspots for fighting me again, and also fighting me again after that really quick push out. Let's talk damage after this fight. The wedge was bent out of shape, I lost a screw somehow, the magnet came clean off, and I had a few bite marks on the tires. It was also either right before or right after this fight that the gearbox shaft had started to come loose. But it was still attached and there was no time to replace it, so with that we enter the final match, the Antweight Rumble. In the Antweight Rumble there were 18 robots, which is absolutely insane and super chaotic. Due to the dog show across the hall blasting copyrighted music, I'll have to cut out the introductions for this fight. Here we go. <laughs> What? Five minutes. Last one standing in three, two, one. Fight it out the track. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. At this match, I went in for a bit. I got to push some bots around and managed to push Bite Size Dragon out of the arena before somehow getting flipped, running into Meanie Mouse upside down, getting turned around, and driving out of the arena. Overall, this event was phenomenal, and I really enjoyed it. I really couldn't have asked for a better first event. I got one win in the bracket, took another bracket match to a close judges decision, and was able to get one out of the arena push and last the full three minutes against one of the scariest drums there. I was originally planning on doing a sort of post-mortem of the bots after the first event, looking at the things that worked and the things that didn't, but this video is plenty long by this point, so I think I'll split that off into its own video. Thanks to everyone that helped out at the event, and I can't wait for next year. If you want to see the rest of the competition, you can check it out on the Fingertech Robotics Twitch channel, and on the SCRC Kilobots YouTube channel soon. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the videos where I go over building these robots, links can be found in the description. Be sure to subscribe for future robot combat builds and competitions. Thanks again for watching, and keep fighting.